In the gathering of our digital information, where does Facebook stop? Where does the NSA begin? The lines blur as young Zuckerberg lambastes the president. President Obama assesses the politics of the moment. The NSA stands largely silent. We're thrilled to bring you David Kirkpatrick, author of The Facebook Effect, and Richard Falconrath, former White House security advisor, to discuss and have a conversation on this important matter. David, let's get right to it. Why is Zuckerberg lecturing the president of the United States? Because Facebook is a consummately global company for which trust is absolutely paramount. And since the revelations that the NSA has treated all American Internet companies as their private playground, all the American Internet companies have been terrified at the impact that's going to have on their global business. And they feel that the U.S. government does not understand the role they play okay. in the economy, the globality of their yeah, business, David, and the I'm, need for trust, I know. especially outside the U.S. This is really, this is very important for guys like you in narrow ties in Silicon Valley, Silicon Alley, South by Southwest. I, most of them in Silicon Valley don't wear a tie. Come on. Well, I'm, not, I'm a New York guy. How do you respond to Facebook and the others will help us find the next marginal terrorist? I think they could if they were no if they knew they were doing it they probably would be happy to help you know after all they respond to, to uh, subpoenas they're not refusing to help the government they don't like to have things taken from them unwittingly yeah. they don't like people tapping into their fiber lines well, but they're willing to sell it right I mean they all sell this data. Well, actually Facebook doesn't sell it they sell access to it it's a big wow. difference and neither well, so the Richard, government should buy it. Yeah, I mean, a 29 year old I, calling I, President Obama and scolding him what do you it, think of that? It makes my head explode I mean the <laughs> The impertinence of doing this to the President of the United States, uh, just in general, for a 29-year-old, first point. Why does the second have point, anything to se do with second it? Second point, though, is the hypocrisy. This is a guy whose billions rest on the ability to data mine data given to his company pursuant to a terms of service agreement. The president does what he does pursuant to an electoral mandate in the Constitution of the United States. And this is a big, well, complicated issue. I think issue. Zuckerberg would argue that he hasn't been abiding by the Constitution of the United but, but, States. And, and, and every member of the federal As judiciary would, who's weighed in on this in the last six years disagrees with him. Well, we don't see the court rulings, so how do we even know? Actually, you do see the court rulings. The court rulings now are published, and the Department of Justice has released them. Do you think any CEO has the right to call the president, and it would be appropriate? Oh, first any? of all, the, the point is, Does actually... Does age have the, anything the, to do yes, with it, really? It definitely does have something to do with it, and it shows why he talked about it publicly. It's one thing to have a private conversation with the president, which is a privilege. All right? The second thing is to tell everyone in the world what you said, which is absurd. I so mean, you don't think so, any CEO should do that, ever? No, yeah, then they mostly don't. I mean, I actually cannot think of another case. I mean, do the Wall Street CEOs, when they come in to meet with the president and secretary, go hey, out David, and do a David, blog post about it? David, I this. This is the responsibility of the NSA, the Pentagon, and others to protect us. And yet, at the same time, we've got this ginormous business that you're part of on information. Well, it's the most where's vibrant the part ground? of the American but economy. David, That's where's the complicated the middle part. That's true. Where's There's a middle, the middle ground. ground. Look, the fact is, all these companies are very eager and happy to cooperate under legal and knowing terms with the U.S. government. But when they do things, as has been revealed, like tap into the fiber lines to their data centers secretly and just suck all the data out, ah, that so is what you, a what fundamental so violation what really, of the trust for their users, and they cannot abide so that. So what you're getting at, then, is there's a and distinction. And I don't think it's legal either. There's a distinction between going to a, a business entity and saying, I'll pay you, and you can use my data, as opposed to the government, where you haven't made that agreement. You're violating well, some I, sort of implicit I, I, agreement, right? Yeah, I think, well, the users of Facebook, for better or for worse, basically trade their personal data in exchange okay. for a free service. Richard, I want to get you in here as a last word. Where is the middle ground on this good debate? The middle ground is the rule of law. And so the case you talked about is not actually accurate. When the government goes to Facebook for data, it does it under the rule of law, and it does it pursuant to a court order, and Facebook's cooperation with that okay. court order is not voluntary. It's compulsory. Right, and they've never okay. refused. I want to get both and they of don't you refuse. back.